Hi there, it's Beauty Junkie. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm getting into my Sephora 2022 Spring Sale Haul. I just picked up a few things this time. I didn't go too crazy. I don't plan to pick up too much more, although there are some new things that showed up online that during the sale that um, I'm really interested in. Some Patrick Star blushes, bronzers, um, if any of the Patrick Ta blush duos come back in stock and the colors that I want, I may pick them up. Um, so lots of exciting things. Let's get into what I picked up. First things first, makeup. The probably most exciting purchase to me is the new Patrick Ta Major Dimension 2 eyeshadow palette. This is the Rose Collection palette. It is so freaking pretty. This is my first Patrick Ta product ever. And I just did swatches. I haven't put it on my eyes yet. And it looks amazing. It feels amazing. It feels really high quality. Now this isn't a cheap palette. This is $68 US. Uh, tw if you can get 20% off if you're a Rouge member, it comes out to about 55 before taxes, which, you know, it's still a lot, but it's a lot more reasonable with the discount. So $55 for 12 shades. And it's a nice sturdy palette. It's not super heavy, but it's not cardboard either. And it's cute, pink, bright, shiny. I love the packaging. I love that the cream formulas have a plastic cover over them so you don't get any powder inside the on top of those. It's just really well done. And I, honestly, after picking up this palette, I wish I've picked up more Patrick Ta sooner. Um, so very excited to get into that. I'm not going to do like a lot of detail on the palette. I'm going to show you swatches. I might show snippets of me put trying on the eyeshadow, but I do want to do a dedicated video to the palette because I know a lot of people are interested. And here is the box packaging. Very cool. Very, very cool. I picked up the Patrick Star One Size Concealer. It's called Turn Up the Base the Butter Silk Concealer, and I picked up the shade Fair Rosy number two. It looks really white, but I actually tried this in store luckily, because if I went off the online shades, I would have picked the wrong color. I would have picked something too dark. So I'm glad I went in store. Even though this looks crazy white, it's the closest <laughs> match to me, unfortunately. So I do want to try that with you today. Danessa Myrick's Multi-Chrome Eyeliner. These are not super new, but I think these are pretty new to Sephora within the last few months. These are the Infinite Chrome Micro Pencils, and I picked up just one, the Amethyst shades, like a purple to green. Um, I love the packaging of this. It's very fun. Repeat purchase for me. This is the Tom Ford Fiber Br Fiber Brow Gel in the shade Taupe. Finally restocked on Sephora. And so I had to pick up another one. This is a very expensive but very good eyebrow product. So I'm happy to get 20% off, especially anything Tom Ford if you can get a discount. Take advantage. I know there's not a lot of left in stock so pick it up if you can if taupe works for you this is a classic product not new by any means but i've never had it never purchased it before this is the guerlain meteorites and this is the light revealing pearls of powder and i picked up the shade number two claire light so these are the pearls love the little tin that it comes in it's very cute and decorative I had no idea there's like a sponge layer that has full of glitter, but these are the pearls and they smell very much of violet, very strongly perfumed. Oh boy. All right. So I just lost some balls there. Um, this is a very expensive powder and I've always wanted to try it. I actually got an elf version of this, like a dupe and I thought it was pretty bad, but, um, with a brush, this actually looks pretty nice when I, you know, just used it on my wrist. I haven't used it on my face yet, but I can't wait to see what this powder can do. A couple more body care, hair care things. As I said, this isn't a huge haul. I picked up the Skin Fix Resurface Plus AHA BHA Renewing Cream. This is a very expensive lotion, but it is 10 ounces and it's fragrance free. 
and I tried it last night for the first time. I'll let you know my thoughts in a bit, um, but I know a lot of people are looking for lotions and treatments that help get rid of like bumps in your legs and arms or wherever. Um, and I'm always looking for a good one. So I wanted to try this. I also picked up my last product is a, a hair care bon a hair bonnet from Pattern. This is a satin cap. It's from Tracy Ellis Ross's brand Pattern. And it's a satin turban style cap. And it's satin on both sides. So very smooth. I used it last night and I use it. I want I want to try out something like this on my curls to keep them from getting frizzy overnight and just out of control. Um, for me, I don't wash my hair every day. That would definitely ruin my hair and dry it out even more than it is. So, and I don't always want to straighten my hair or, you know, heat style. So when I just have my hair curly and I want to preserve it as much as I can, I have a silk pillowcase. But these kinds of things also help your hair from getting a little wild. Um, I did try it last night, so I'll give you my thoughts on first impressions using it. It's very smooth. All right, so let's get into this palette. Um, as I said, $68 for this palette. There's 12 shades. The creams are have 0 0.065 ounces. The powder eyeshadows have 0 0.06 ounces per shadow. The names are on the back here of the palette, which is, they're pretty tiny. Could have been a little bit bigger, but that's, that's pretty nice. Does not come with a brush or anything like that. It has this very chrome, you know, outline around each shadow. Big mirror, big, big, nice mirror. There was no protective film when I opened this. I don't know if you guys noticed that. But um, I've done several swatches. You guys can see I've dug in here. And just first impressions from the swatches, this palette is much darker than I expected it to be. For like a neutral rose tone palette, I thought some of these shades would be a bit on the lighter side, a little bit more wearable for me with a light skin tone. But when I swatched, I was so surprised at how deep these are. And I was surprised at the quality of the topper shades. These are really nice. They remind me a lot, just watching, of the Pat McGrath special shades. Just really, really well formulated, smooth. Pat McGrath special shades are a little bit smoother to apply with the finger, but these are still really great quality. And I like the fact that this has something different. You can use these creams as a base or whatever you want to do with them. Um, but I will say this shade is very, very deep on me, and so is are these two. So I don't know how I'm going to use this palette in reality. Um, I might not use all the shades every day, but when I swatched these, I thought they this was like kind of a fall palette, to be honest. So it's kind of funny that this is coming out in spring. I mean, it's rosy, but it's not like a light pastel moment. It is on the deeper side. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the swatches. Um, the first set of swatches are the creams and mattes. The second set is the toppers. And then I did some swatches of the toppers on top of the mattes so you guys can see what they look like together because I do think each shade kind of has a complimentary topper. So I wanted to show you that as well. So later on in the video, if you want to stay tuned, I'm going to be just trying this out, this palette out for the first time. I just, I can't wait. So I got, I got to include something in this video, but I'll do a full close up look into this palette in a separate video. I do want to get into 
applying my face, my concealer, my base makeup. I did get a couple of samples from Sephora and they're foundation samples. So I got the Stellar Limitless Foundation. This is not one that I picked, but I got it. That often happens with Sephora. So I got a sample card with four shades and I have L01. This looks very watery to me. I swatched it. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys that. the shade L01. And then I also got the Westman Atelier Vital Skin Foundation Stick Samples and I swatched But I'm going to try to use the Westman Atelier Foundation Stick today. It looks like this putting up my hair for a bit. Stick foundation, I don't know if this, you consider this a cream just in stick form. It's a little bit scary just because it's so concentrated. This is what the O shade looks like on my finger. And it looks fairly neutral. I think it's gonna work. I don't know if I should apply this with a brush. Probably, I just don't wanna waste any products. I feel like using my fingers the safest. Um, I only have this much left. I'm gonna use it on my nose. I can just tell right away I wouldn't buy this. It's, I feel like I need like a ton of like oil primer before I put this on to get it to spread a little bit better. Now I'm going to use this darker shade just because I need more product. That shade is very light on me. Here's the concealer, as I said, fair number two. I'm gonna show you swatches of this guy. This guy, this is very light color. It feels fairly thick. So I'm expecting full ass coverage with this product. How much do you get? with this. This is 7 milliliters 0.24 fluid ounces. Turn up the base is the name of it. Our soft focus medium to full buildable coverage multi-use concealer helps smooth and cover unwanted texture, un uneven tone and appearance of dark circles with a highly pigmented hydrating formula. Butter smooth, blendable application, natural finish, all day wear. So those are the promises. Oh boy. Does that look like paint or what? Okay, so I've heard mixed things, so I'm gonna try to move quickly because I've heard you gotta move quickly. So I'm gonna take my damp little makeup sponge here. This, I probably need to get two concealers to get the right shade. This is really white. Some of you like this light of a color. <laughs> Ooh, I feel like the, this foundation does not match. And I also think I applied too much. But that is certainly brighter. I don't know that, that it's that attractive, but certainly brighter. I think a little bit really goes a long way. You guys can see I'm spreading it all over the place over the nose. Even though I think this is probably the closest one to my skin tone, this does not look so good. I feel like it performs well, like it's definitely brighter. It's definitely more on the full coverage side, which I don't have a ton of concealers with this kind of coverage, so it's good to have something like this. Um, but I do feel I look a bit strange. So I'm going to apply the rest of my complexion stuff and come back and finish off with trying this Girl On powder. All right, I put on that Stellar foundation. It's really light, but I think it matches the concealer a lot better. Um, it doesn't look great. I look very dry right now. My nose looks very red, um, but I put it on. I put on my setting powder and I put on the Tom Ford Fiber Brow Gel. 
things are looking a little bit rough at this point, but I wanted to show you what the meteorites powder is like. I'm going to use my rougher 20 fan brush and I'm just going to dust over this. You can see the powder kicking up. Um, and I'm going to just try this as a highlighter, even though actually I can already tell I'm probably just going to need a big brush to apply this all over the face. Um, when you kind of swatch it on your hand, it can look like concentrated bits of little glimmer glitter powders. Doesn't look so great, but when you actually just spread it around, diffuse it, it looks a lot better on the skin, I'm hoping. At least on the back of my hand, that's what it looked like. I tried to do a swatch, it didn't really work out. So let's see, maybe I'll use a tighter, a tighter type of a brush here, the Sonia G Face Pro and do this. I know some people actually use the powder at the bottom. Here we go. I think this is the best brush. Something like this. To uh, finish things off. Let's see if I can see a difference. Okay. Yeah, you can definitely see the silver sheen in this Claire shade. I don't know that this is so amazing anymore, to be honest. Maybe there's a trick to it that I'm not aware of or something I need to do different. But I just first impressions using this powder, it does give a little twilight sparkle to the skin. It does make it a little bit more interesting. It is pretty but I don't know that this is a product that's that innovative anymore. I don't know. What do you guys, this foundation, I should have put primer on first and the concealer, but concealer is going into my creases a little bit, but uh, I'm just gonna press that out. That's fine. Definitely waking up my under eye for sure. Yeah, the Guerlain powder, I don't know. I don't know about. Let's get into this palette and I might use this eyeliner with it. Um, I'm going to just kind of point to the shades I'm using. Fast forward a little bit as I apply and then show you guys the final look. Oh, this palette is so pretty. Um, I do want to do something very wearable and I have powder all over my shirt. Keep in mind that people with fair skin tones probably want to know what the fair tones are like. Um, I probably won't get into the deepest tones today, but they do look very pretty. And I'm going to start off with this cream shade as a base. Cream shade. I'm going to put this on my eyes first with my finger. You guys can see, you know, how rich that is. I think this is mostly a terracotta palette. Yes, it does have some rosiness to it, but there's a lot of brown in this palette from these swatches. So I do think this, this is a very um, dark, medium to dark skin tone friendly. Uh, or not the deepest of skin tones. Obviously, that's a little bit more tricky to, you know, find a good palette for those folks. Just like it's hard to find a good palette for the pale folks. But you guys can see the pigment coming off of that cream. And I think this is going to be a good base. So there is our cream color. Now let's get into the powders. Devotion, I believe, this one here. So you may look at my eyes and be like, oh, that is rosy. I think this is a very ball-like brown-orange terracotta palette. So I don't think rose is quite the, the name. It's not pink. It's not red. It's not 
really cool or rosy toned. It is very warm, in my opinion. Nothing wrong with that. It's just if when you look think of the word rose, you might be expecting something else. So those are these two shades here. Okay. Now let we're getting lighter as we go. So I don't know the order of the shades here, but we're going in with this one across the lid. Okay, I don't know that there is a lot of difference between the shade and the last shade I applied. Seems to be pretty slight. Just gonna take that shade under the eye. Maybe a little bit more orange, I suppose. I know it's looking rough so far, but I love the, the formula. I don't know that I love these shades right off because they're so deep for me. Like I, I'm just going to be limited in how often I can use this. Um, because now we're onto the lightest shade <laughs> and I feel like if these were turned like to 50% lighter, each of these shades, this would be a lot more wearable for me. But uh, this is a, a pretty like dramatic daytime look just using matte shades, um, which is pretty. I just, it's going to be a little bit more challenging for me. Um, but this is the lightest shade, matte shade here in the inner corner, and it is pretty. So there is all matte's dusty look. We could go even deeper. Let's just do a little bit of a deeper shade for funsies, yeah? Let's go into this deepest dark chocolate matte here. And uh, just create a little bit of a smoky dimension. This is where we're getting into much more nighttime, I would say. Wow, this is a fiery look. I almost want to call this pal palette fire collection more than rose. What do you guys think? Does this scream rose color story to you? That being said, these are just the mattes. So we're going to get into the glitters and I'm going to use my finger. All right. Question is, which topper do I want to use? I think I'm going to go with the pinkest shade, which I think is Lust on the lid here. Ooh. So, so, so pretty. Oh my gosh, you guys. Even though like I'm not a huge fan of the intensity of these shades are really dark. I love the quality like the glitter just applied so easily a little bit of fallout, but that's okay. Who needs Pat McGrath when you have this? Like, seriously. Look at that. I still love Pat. Don't get me wrong. But this is like a really close competitor. Look at that topper. Ooh, pretty. That is something else. I kind of want to go into the gold on the inner corner here. All right, look at that. What a beautiful palette. Are you guys seeing this? So, so pretty and stunning and very much a summer sunset desert vibe to me. Love the topper shades. I think you'd absolutely need the toppers in this palette. It really just sets everything else off. All right, so I'm loving this palette so far. Could I have done... Now, he only has two palettes, right? He has the more brown, typical brown neutral palette, and he has this one. I want that light, light, light one that he won't probably ever come out with, but <laughs> that would be the palette for me. All right, I have this eyeliner I do want to try. I don't know how it's going to look because it's purple. But I want to try it on the lips. It looks stunning as a swatch, but I want to try it on the eyes. I mean, I'm going to need two hands with this guy. It's a very 
tiny little liner. Hmm, okay. I get a little bit of a multi-chrome vibe with it. I feel like it's getting underappreciated on the top of my lash line right now. But I think if it was by itself and more of the star of the show, I would appreciate this more, but you definitely need a few swipes over the same area, in my opinion. Just need to go back and forth to get that maximum color. So it's not like a one swipe and done kind of liner, but it is pretty. Even though it doesn't really go with this look, it kind of works. All right, so I'm gonna put on some mascara and finish off with some lips and I will be back. Right, here we are here's the final look I'm really happy with the end result even though I was complaining the whole time the shades are too dark I mean at the end of the day this is a really pretty look um, but I will say because it is on the darker side for fair skin tones I feel like some people are gonna struggle with creating a look that's every day um, unless you prefer like a really beautiful blown out smoky kind of rusty look um, I think these shades are really rich but that being said, this is a really stunning palette. I can't wait for him to come out with more. Maybe something on the cooler side would be preferable, lighter. Just that the intensity of it, I think, will scare some people. Um, but the glitters, I mean, they're so good. It's a nice contrast against the deep matte tones. And I love the cream base. I mean, it's a, it's a stunning freaking palette. All right, moving on to other things. Also the eyeliner, I think it is very pretty. It's like a subtle kind of cool eyeliner. You'll get a little bit of shift, but it's not over the top. I mean, from far away, you just look like, you look like you're wearing a, a regular eyeliner in my opinion, especially against like a very colorful eye look. This isn't gonna stand out a lot. I don't know that it's super worth it unless you like colorful eyeliner as part of your everyday look. Maybe you don't wear a lot of eyeshadow, you just like eyeliner. This is something cool and different. Um, it's really easy to apply, it's smooth, but it did take me a couple of swipes over the same areas to get the payoff that I have. Um, I don't know that I'm going to pick up another one just for some impressions, but it is a nice formula. Well, I think a lot of people will get along with it. For lips, I use the Dior Lip Glow Oil in or Hollow Pink. It has some glitter to it, but it's pretty much a clear gloss. I did end up adding some Pat McGrath Divine Rose Blush in the Desert Rose shade. I can't remember. Um, and then a little bit of bronzer and good to go. Um, I don't love my skin today. I'm very dry and powdery, but I do love the eyes a lot. Um, the concealer, did I, do I like it? I think it actually, I'm going to have to try it more to really form a, an actual opinion on it, but right now it looks pretty good. A lot of brightness, get rid of that tiredness, look a little bit more awake and at the end of the day. The Guerlain Finishing Powder. Again, I'm going to have to use it more to form more of opinion, maybe use it with different foundations in different ways, but today I'm not so impressed with it. Um, I think it's just okay. It's, it's, it does, when you look up close, you can see the sparkle. I don't know that it's super flattering on me or if it stands out enough for me to really love it. It smells really good though, and it looks pretty on my counter here. All right, let's talk about the other things that I picked up that I've already tried a little bit. The Satin Bonnet. I wore this last night. It was fine for most of the night, but I tossed and turned a lot and I woke up. It was all the way, it was like off. So it came off and uh, basically fell off my head. <laughs> um, but for the most part, my hair stayed really in good shape and it didn't get super frizzy for second day hair. So I'm pretty impressed with it, even though it did sort of come off. Um, it is a little bit tight around the scalp, um, but I think what makes the difference between this and other bonnets, I have one from Amazon that's also satin, 
but it's polyester on the inside. It's not as soft. This was double lined satin, super soft on the inside. So I do think that helps. And even though I have a silk pillowcase, like I still, my hair is long. It gets on my sheets. It gets crumpled up. So I think this is going to help, but I'll have to continue to use it to see, you know, what it does on the third and fourth, you know, the third night after not washing it. Does it keep my hair looking good or not? Um, but I don't like that it fell off, but I do find it to be rather comfortable. I forget that it's there. So something to think about. I did get it on sale. It is $22. I'm sure there's other caps out there that are available. I did notice though that it's probably best for short hair. I do kind of have trouble fitting all my hair in it. It's just kind of a pain to put on. But once it's on, I mean, it, it pretty much stayed on. I can't control my body when I sleep though, so. Um, the Renewing Cream. So what I like about this, it's really, I don't know, soft is the right word. It seems really creamy and moisturizing and I put it on last night. Um, I didn't realize though, like what the ingredients are in this. And if I paid attention, I probably wouldn't have picked it up because this is so expensive. Um, it takes a while to work in and, and really like absorb into the skin. You really have to rub, 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 rub. Um, I can't tell you if it works cause I just got it, um, in terms of like, getting rid of my bumps. Um, I don't know that I for sure have KP, kurtosis pilaris, but I do, I think have like bumps related to leg hair growing back in, um, and just not breaking through the skin properly. And I get little shaving kind of bumps or bumps from not shaving, if that makes sense. Um, and I did not get this when I was younger, but as I get older, I have I feel like I need to exfoliate my body more um, and I quite haven't quite found the products to really do it effectively. So I'm looking for a good leave-on cream. So I picked this up and because it says it has AHAs and BHAs, but actually it only has AHAs even though the container says BHAs. There's no BHA ingredients in here from what I can tell. It only has AHAs and they are, um, what's the word, natural. So I know people look for that, but I want effective and effective usually isn't natural. So there's no, there's AHA in here, but I don't know how well this is gonna work is all I'm gonna say. And I have a feeling I'm gonna be disappointed, but maybe it will moisturize my skin. Um, there's other lotions out there like amlactin that have lactic acid or, you know, glycolic acid out there that are much better at this, but like amlactin smells really bad and I don't want a lotion that smells bad. So I think I was tempted by this being fragrance free. Um, but I don't know how well it's going to work. So I might, I don't know. We'll see what happens with it. I don't want to say it's not going to work. There's a lot of mixed reviews on this product. Some people love it, some people don't. Um, they do have body scrub, which I don't really like body scrubs to be honest. I want this just to work by itself. So we'll see. Um, I don't have a lot of hope though. So kind of disappointed because I actually read reviews after I bought it, like YouTube videos and uh, most people said it doesn't work. <laughs> So I should have done my homework. I just bought it without thinking as I often do. Um, anyways, that's kind of it for my first impressions, my Sephora haul. I do want to mention what I was thinking about picking up that I couldn't or didn't. Patrick Ta has some blush duos, but the shades that I wanted are all sold out. Um, Patrick Star has some new blush palettes that were not available the first day of the sale, so I haven't picked them up since. And the, I don't know, I have to check and see what colors I have, but I feel like the colors I wanted were also sold out by the time I got to the site. So a lot of things are going quickly, as is always the case with Sephora. Very annoying. Um, I actually went into Sephora store recently and it's a brand new Sephora and it is small, very small. They don't have a whole lot of stuff available, which makes me really sad. I remember the days of the big, big Sephora stores. 
those were a lot of fun. Um, anyways, that is it for me. If you guys are thinking about picking anything up, anything that I picked up, please comment below. If you have any questions, comment below as well. If you like this video, click the thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye guys.